going to show you the use of some toys to look at the conservation of energy. And how fortuitous, we have a guest here, Jeff, who also does stuff with toys all the time. So I'm going to ask Jeff, and I'm going to ask him to sort of play the naive learner to a certain extent so that we can act, he can act as if he were a student. So we're going to take a look at the conservation of energy for real right here. Jeff, if you could come over here, and he really doesn't have an idea of what we're doing because I'm winging this as I go along. Here's a spring. And I'm going to hold this, and I'm going to ask you to pull it down part way. Let's see, maybe about there, right. and let go. And I'm going to hold on to it. Whoop! Maybe not that far. So you see, there's a teaching tip. We did that on purpose, so you would see. Don't pull it too far. Okay, let go now. There it is. If this were a friction-free world, that would go on forever, up and down. I'm telling you, you'd be. That is great, isn't it? You could watch that for an entire class period, I bet. Bobbing and weaving. But eventually, because there's some friction in the spring, some air friction, that will be damped out and it will come to rest. But if it were a friction-free world, that would go forever. So what this has is, when down here at this point, this has elastic or spring potential energy. It's stored in there. When we let go, that potential energy is changed into kinetic energy and it starts to come up. It loses potential and gains kinetic. At the top, the elastic energy is gone, the potential now, it, and the kinetic energy has stopped, but gravity takes over. So gravity starts to pull it down. And that energy, that potential energy then goes back into the spring. Okay, and so it goes back and forth, just going through a series of energy changes. There's some kinetic energy, there's some potential energy. But the conservation of energy says the total energy would be the same in the system if it weren't for friction. So we're going to stop this now because otherwise you'd watch it the entire period. And toys, they're very interesting to have in your class. Kids love them, but they can also do some teaching. So in this case, we're going to take and we're going to put some stored energy in this little, well, let's start out with the dinosaur. We're going to wind this up. This has a spring or something in there. Not exactly sure, because if I looked inside, I don't think I'd ever get it back together. It crawls across the table, going from stored potential energy into energy of motion. And that kind of hops and does the same thing. And here's another one. And it goes into translation and rotational energy. That's okay. Let it ride. And here we've got the flaming lips, and there's a spring inside here, and I'm going to push that and trap it on here. So now we've got potential energy, and I can turn that into kinetic energy when I release it. All right. And here is one of my favorites. This is a... <laughs> Quiet, just like the kid in the back of the class. This one has, again, potential energy stored in the spring. Whoa! And it also can have some rotational. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Enough of that. Okay, absolutely. My all-time favorite is Tim the bird. Tim comes from France. All right, so I'm not getting fresh with him. What you do is you wind him up. He has a little rubber band inside of him. Okay, and after I've got this elastic potential energy in Tim, and Tim actually flaps his wing and can fly, change that potential into kinetic. So, okay. oh, Tim flew all right. Do we need goggles for that? You might, so watch your eyes. Here you go. Kill Tim, kill! <laughs> All right, so well, Tim did not, that was not the best flight of Tim that I've ever seen, but uh, it's going to have to do. The very last one we're going to do is with these spheres right here. Okay. And you, you believe, Jeff, in the conservation of energy, so you can, I believe. You can tell me. I'm going to drop this sphere, and your, your object will be to catch it, okay? Okay. That was good. And, it, and did it come up to the same height that I dropped? No. That's but because it 80%. lost about 80%. It lost some energy due to friction, friction and heat. There's some heat in the ball. 
So, all right, now, you ready for this now? I'm ready. All right, so I'm gonna drop this ball, and if you can catch this on the way up, I'm gonna give you an A in this course. Are you okay with this? 80%. I'm excited. All right, Jeff's excited. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> no A for you. I this. wanted an A. <laughs> I know. And as Jeff really knows, this ball is called a stupid ball, is that right? Well, just like me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not stupid. This absorbed all the energy. Actually, the, cl the question I always ask my students, would you wanna make your car bumper out of this or out of this? Guess which one they always pick? This one. But if you reflect on it, this has got to be worse. Because if your car hits this, you get whacked twice. First on the collision, and then on the rebound. This one absorbs the energy, which is what you want your bumper to do. Conservation of energy is still there, but the energy is now in the ball and in the floor. Toys, they can do a lot with them with energy and a lot of other things. They're very useful in your science classroom. Thank you.